Should you be banking your own stem cells? Well, the prospects sound so futuristic, right? Doctors like to forecast miraculous cures that might come from them. Politicians like to debate over their research, efficacy, and funding. And hopeful patients like to dream about them and the possibility that they might walk again or repair a failing heart or even for a non-surgical facelift. Or maybe, like me, you want to use stem cells to grow a new breast for the one you lost to cancer in a mastectomy. This isn't science fiction. It doesn't have to be controversial. And it's time to demystify the topic and learn about the possibilities that they offer us, rich or poor, old or young. So today, we're going to learn about how you can bank your own stem cells and the latest on how they're being used. So I invited my friend, Dr. Robin Smith, from the Neostem Company. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you. What exactly is a stem cell? So stem cells are these precursor cells that become the different cells and organs and the tissue of our body. That's how we fo were formed, from stem cells. Who can bank their stem cells? Well, anyone can. I mean, the idea is to do it before you get sick. Uh, and taking stem cells while you're healthy, before you age, before they become less in quantity and quality is the way you want to have this done. Is a bioinsurance for your future. Are, are banked stem cells being used at the moment for any procedures? Well, it's standard of care to use stem cells to recreate your immune system. So for people with leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, certain anemias, they need a new bone marrow after they've had chemotherapy. You can use some for bone marrow reconstitution and also for other therapies that will continue to emerge in the future. So if you want to bank your stem cells, you have to be cancer free. You have to be cancer spread free. So if someone has a solitary tumor, like a small breast cancer, you can have your stem cells collected before it spreads. Well, I was so excited when I did it because I do see it as bioinsurance that if down the road, I plan to live a long time, and if down the road um, I get one of the dreaded diseases that everyone is afraid of, that I would have my stem cells banked while I was healthy. And so what you removed from me were V cells. Explain what that is. We took a snapshot of your immune system, and there were many cells. In them were V cells, these very small embryonic-like stem cells that we know are pluripotent, meaning they can become all cells of all organs. Are these V cells, very small embryonic-like stem cells, were they in me when I was a baby? Um, when the egg and sperm came together uh -huh. and that divided and it divided again and divided again to become Suzanne, uh -huh. you have stem cells that are around that embryo stage are called epiblastic, which are V-cells, and they're sort of frozen in time, and they're sitting in your bone marrow, they're in your body, and God forbid you had something like a heart attack, those cells would be secreted from your bone marrow into your blood to try and go and repair the areas of your body that need fixing. Um, but there's not enough quantities that can go out there at a time of an injury, so if you take them, quantify them, purify them, you can then put them back in in times of injury. So the idea is how do we use these V-cells to repair organs, uh -huh. like valves, it could be wounds and skin, it could be your retina, um, if you have issues where you have blindness or macular degeneration. So we're looking to create therapies using these V-cells. When you say they can become all different cell types, what does that mean? It means that they can divide into the cell types that you're looking for. So you can take a cell and say, okay, we want you to become a heart muscle. And you put it in the environment of the heart where it's needed to lay down new blood ve vessels or create new muscle. They understand from their environment what they should become. And because they're your own, your body recognizes them as your own. So you're saying that our st uh, stem cells, our V cells, have an intelligence. Your cells have an intelligence. They eat, it's part of your repair mechanism. So let's walk through exactly what the procedure is. As, as I said, it was boring lying there. I had an IV in each arm. What was going on? Yeah, so it's very similar to donating platelets. You had one area where the blood was coming out of you into the machine to pull out the stem cells, and then the blood was re returned right into your system. So it's not like sharing needles. You don't share the blood. It's a very clean system that protects you so that your blood is basically filtered. So now these are put into little bags? That's right. They're cryopreserved, and they're there, frozen, if you will, for, you, for your future. Cryopreserved means um, uh, super frozen. Super frozen. <laughs> That's right. They're your cells and they're well and alive and they're there for you for your future when you need them. And they're in different packages so that once you defrost them, it's like a TV dinner, you can't refreeze. So we have them in small aliquots so that if you only need a few cells for a particular treatment, you're not defrosting all of your cells. Uh -huh. And then you have 48 hours once they're defrosted to use them. Now, you've taken all these um, V cells out of me. What, 20 vials, did you say? Right. We've taken 20 vials of your stem cells, including your V cells. Do I have more in me now? Did I you make more? You have plenty. By midnight the next day, you were repleted to where you were to begin with. This demystifies the whole embryonic discussion, correct? 
There's a lot of misunderstanding uh -huh. of what the difference is between embryonic and adult stem cell. You're right, these cells are very small, embryonic-like, but they're adult stem cells, so you don't have the controversy. And I think what we need to do is better understand all the promise, all the therapies that currently use adult stem cells, so that people understand there is no controversy, and there are therapies out there, and there's a lot of hope for our future. It feels not only that it's the future, but it's also the present. I'm so glad that I have mine banked. It allows me to not worry about the diseases that um, everybody is afraid of, heart disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, uh, autoimmune diseases, toxicity, it's and great. Over 50% of people who need a bone marrow transplant can't find a match, so you really see it when people need the cells and they're not there for them. Well, it's the Neo Stem Company, Dr. Robin Smith, I did it, I'm so glad I did. Thank I did you. it. You did it, <laughs> thank you very much, great seeing okay. you. on the next episode of Breaking Through. And those hormones really do increase the risk of breast cancer.